there. Some parallel processing, like parallel DBX160 compression to get it, give it a little bit more snap. Really make it like poke out of the mix. And um, I like to side chain the kick and the snare to the hi-hat so that the hi-hat just gently gets pushed down whenever the kick and the snare hit. Yeah, some drum bus processing. I love the knock plugin by Decap. I love the black box. Definitely love the black box. The Shadow Hills Class A mastering compressor. Also the the one from Plugin Alliance. Sounds really, really great. And you can get like subtle compression without really like smothering it down, you know. Mm. So yeah, a lot of it is just in getting the EQ right and then getting the balance right. And then, yeah, some drum bus processing and that goes into the mix bus, which has like some like clipping on it and that all works together really well. Amazing. And in terms of like, uh, you know, 808s, bass, working with the with the drum set, you're doing, I'm, I'm assuming like tons of side chaining. And... Yeah, I love to do manual side chaining. So I mm-hmm. love to just kind of draw the volume because I feel like it's more accurate. It's more precise. Yeah. So I'll just draw like a really, really tiny volume dip whenever the kick hits. Wow. And it's really mainly the transient and then it just goes up again. So it's really short and really, really like subtle. So you can't hear that there is actual side chaining happening because mm, what's dope. happening... In terms of side chaining, like when you side chain a kick to push down a bass, that's not always what the producer wanted. So if the producer wanted a side chaining effect, then they would have done it, you know. So they would have they, printed it for you. Yeah. I mean, for some reason they really love how the kick and the bass are working together. So who am I to say like I should only hear the kick and not the bass in this moment, you know? So for me, it's really just a, a way of like getting them out of each other's way. And so it's either volume, manual volume automation or track spacer uh, by Waves Factory. And track spacer is a side chaining tool. I call it the cheat code <laughs> because mm-hmm. um, it's a side chaining tool where it takes the external signal, um, it reads the the EQ uh, the frequency response and it actually mirrors it and just cuts it exactly where it's hitting. So oh. wherever the kick is hitting, that's what it's going to cut out of the bass. And so oh, it's not like really a cool. volume. It's just an EQ based cutting, which is really, really awesome. And yeah. I use track spacer all over my mixes all of the time just to make space for, for things. That's really smart. I My, my buddy, mm-hmm. uh, Fernando Lodero, who's been on the show, was telling me that and, and I've been doing this since he told me this, was that you could actually use the Pro-Q3 um, yeah. in dynamic mode and dynamic, sidechain it. And yeah. then you could like literally like notch out like 60 hertz where the kick is hitting in the bass yeah. and then just... Yeah. And so... Absolutely. Works also really well. Also one of my favorite ways. Yeah. Yeah. One of my favorite ways to sidechain also because it's so subtle. You can't hear that there's any sidechaining going on. It's just something gently pushing something else out of the way. Um, without like that huge ducking effect that you get. So yeah, the FabFilter Pro Q3, really great for that. Um, I also like to use that for the snare and the hi-hat where I Mm. will take like a a really harsh frequency in the hi-hat, like maybe let's say six or seven K around that uh, area. And I will sidechain it uh, so that the snare ducks that frequency down whenever they play together. So there's no stacking of like that harshness you know yeah because you'll still hear that there's a hi-hat playing it's just not the the harsh frequencies really stacking up so yeah it's also one of my favorite ways it's neat for drums it's really like puzzle pieces you know like Mm -hmm. especially when you're like i guess (laughs) trying to get like really loud and modern sounds like you know just getting this out of the way in the way yeah it's like uh yeah just get things out of each other's way without really just like sacrificing the integrity of the sound, you know, because if you right. accuse something, you just filter something out, then it's just gone forever, you know? Right. So why not treat it in a way like it's out of the way when it needs to be out of the way? Yeah, that's really smart. Yeah, th- th- you're giving me a lot of things to think about when I'm when I'm mixing. So I- I'm really, I'm loving this. This is like... Awesome. <laughs> it's so, so fun to talk yeah, about. Yeah, and you can just get so detailed. And, and it, it, it's, it's, it's cool how you use like these like little tips and tricks to... 
you know, not literally individually do every single moment, <laughs> not automate yeah. every single moment, but like yeah. get these little things to kind of get things out of their way almost automatically. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's one of my favorite ways to get things out of each other's way rather than just doing a shitload of EQing, you know, that's just <laughs> really just changes the whole sound forever. And, you know, sometimes you don't even have the bass playing in some sections of like, I don't know, eight bars where there's no bass. And then every just everything sounds super thin. Right. Just because the bass is cut out from everything, you know, and then either you can automate it back so that, you know, the low cut isn't so heavy during that part. But you know, this is actually, for me, works better this way. This is like the mixing equivalent of having your cake and eating it too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Amazing. So so I do want to ask you a little bit about your, your artist, you know, career, you know, balancing that with your mixing work. How much, is it something that's kind of just like on the side for fun or is it something that, you know, you take like, I guess, partially seriously? What does that what does that uh, balance look like for you? Yeah, I um, I love being creative. I love creating actual music. I love writing. I love coming up with melodies. It's just that for me, that can't be something I live off of. So for me, it has to be something that's just coming and going freely whenever it shows up and whenever it doesn't. And that's fine. So for a while when I was really like... Um, going after an artist's career and really building on it, I already noticed that I didn't feel at home on stage. So I was doing these performances, I was getting out there as an artist, but actually that didn't feel right to me. But I felt like I had no choice. I felt like I had to, if I wanted to have a career in music this is what I absolutely have to do and so I mm -hmm. kind of like forced myself through that discomfort and that was actually good for a while to like not give into like fears and and discomfort and uncertainty because then actually I know really know what it's like and then I can say like mm, that's not for me you know so yeah you gave it a real shot if they're yeah, if there's like a huge pressure on it for me to make a certain amount of money every month or every year, then for me, that just kind of like completely chokes it up all the way. And there's no creativity left for me in that. So um, the artist thing is for me just really something that gives me a lot of joy, something that I really love to do. And I love having freedom in that sense that I can touch it when I want to and then I can just kind of like leave it on the side whenever I'm focused on other things and this mixing thing is something I can do all day every day so that's a <laughs> better thing for me to yeah kind of go to for uh for making a living actually and for still doing something I'm very passionate about yeah but I'm not pressured into like coming up with all this stuff that's all these all these ideas and all this yeah i don't know yeah genius that i need for uh <laughs> to to in order to uh, i live totally get it, that you know? yeah they, they I, i'm not envious of of my artist friends that are like lifers as like the, yeah. the artist singer songwriter it's hard man i know right it's, that's so hard but to, but to know that it's there when you want it and need it is is also great. Like uh, I don't know if you've read that. There's a book called Big Magic by um, Elizabeth Gilbert. Have you have you read it? Yeah, yeah, I read it. Yeah, yeah. so it's, it's mm -hmm. great. And she and you know she's talking about like, yeah. you know, like you're gonna do this regardless of whether you make money from it, and and it's not based on is this my business? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that that opens yeah. up that kind of world of like, oh, it's creative yeah. again. It's not about. It's not about the the money. Yeah, it doesn't have to fit into like this these these walls of like oh it has to do well on Spotify. It has to like get eighty million streams and then I can live off of it. Yeah. You know, like there's just that whole, that whole thing just doesn't resonate with me as a person. So yeah. for me, if I can leave it like this and just keep it like something as a just a joyful thing to do then that's actually perfect for me yeah yeah i love that and um and your streams are not bad <laughs> so all that to say people should go check out your not bad people should yeah. go check out your music uh nina um it's Thank just you. it's just nina music right um on spot on yeah. spotify or apple or wherever you get your 
your your tunes because yeah. it sounds it sounds super dope. Um, one more thing about mixing Thank that I, I wanted to ask you that I w- forgot to to mention was monitoring. Uh, I'm curious, like what your mm-hmm. what your monitoring setup is like in your studio and how you're listening. Yeah, I have the um, Prism Lyra two interface, mm. uh, which is a really just a huge part of my monitoring because um, it sounds really clean. You know, it doesn't have any coloring in the sound. It's very clean, which is perfect for mixing, actually. Um, and I have the Barefoot Footprint O ones, uh, which are little powerhouses. They have like they have two subwoofers each. Yeah, and um, they have some minor coloring in what you're hearing, but that's actually also really nice for me because then I know it's not double colored the sound like my monitoring like the the prism is super clean i know how the barefoot sound so and i know how they sound in my room which is acoustically treated yeah so that's my minor setup and i have the biodynamic 990s the open headphones um which i've been working on for more than 10 years you know so i know exactly how they sound i know exactly what i'm listening to uh yeah and just um that with Pro Tools, that's it. That's good. Good to go. Yeah. yeah. Do you do you really do you switch off a lot between your headphones and your speakers, or is it like mostly on the speakers, and then you kind of just check a couple things on the? I headphones? switch a lot actually because I'm so used to working on headphones um, from coming up living at my mom's house. You know, <laughs> I did a lot on headphones, almost everything on headphones, and then uh, moving out, living with roommates. Did a lot on headphones, was working throughout the night a lot. So I was working on headphones a lot. So actually, I'm kind of just used to doing a lot on headphones and then being able to switch to the speakers and then switch back and, you know, back and forth. Um, that works the best for me. And the the Barefoot actually also has a monitoring switch here, which, which you can uh, switch to a different types of sounds. So you can have like a old school setting which is based on the um, Yamaha and a sense you have the cube setting and you have a hi-fi setting and then just flat so do you switch between you switch between them yeah especially for the low end and just to see kind of like where the vocal is sitting in terms of the rest yeah um, it's really great for that yeah yeah people I, I've heard people say that they're using the switch on the barefoots to kind of like they'll get the low end dialed in and then they'll kind of move it to the NS10 yeah. version to make sure that the mid range is bopping and you're still hearing the low end yeah exactly yeah that NS10 setting is really great for mid range and uh, and low end specifically just to see where everything is uh, is balanced at yeah awesome yeah the barefoots mm-hmm. look amazing I'll try yeah. them out one day. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> you should get a demo and see how they sound in they're your, so ex- in your They're space. so expensive in, in Israel. I, I don't know what like VAD and stuff is yeah. like in, in the Netherlands, but yeah. I, I got Focals recently and I'm actually, I'm loving them. So Oh, those are great yeah. too. But the like not like yeah. the crazy expensive, like not the top level ones, but I got like the, the Shape Twins, but they're... Right, they're, they're similar to the to the barefoots because they have like those kind of side woofer things. Yeah, they have a great clean sound yeah. to them. Yeah, they're not super colored, so that's great, and they still give you a lot of energy. Yeah. to work off of. Yeah, and they translate. I'm finding they're they're just translating, which is the most important yeah. the most important thing Absolutely. at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I'd mm-hmm. love to jump into the sauce segment, and so people could kind of hear what you've been working on your and and hear for themselves. Yeah. So so you sent me a track called Arizona by Jordan Mitchell. Um, So let's have a listen to that for about 90 seconds and we'll talk about it. Sound cool? Yeah, sounds good. I've been out in Arizona. I've been dissing. I've been looking for a serotonin. And it's been missing in my head since I was 20 something. Always 80 the curl. Feeling jaded and old. Baby, you just say the words and I'll be on a one way. Sick of having breakdowns. See me on the wrong way. Running for nowhere. Maybe after Corona, we'll meet in Sedona He said, is it obvious that I wanted more than just tonight? Needed more than just goodbye But I guess it's okay if I'm not alright I'm too old to get wasted, strong out in the weekends Burning my lungs up, been high this whole season Been high this whole year, cause I can't take you leaving Don't leave Arizona, so you're my reason to go I don't wanna go if you're not there me Say what you gotta say, I cannot leave, baby Know that I hear so 